everybody a bad situation. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Instagram trying to stop a nigga from being great, bro. Thank you, real nigga down, dude. Alright, let me send these there by some more. There we go. Now we do. Now we do. Now we try to do something. You understand? Let me see the invite. These boys are by. Turn on the song. Bam. Listen, we're going to make this thing happen with another, man. What we going to find? <laughs> Bro, Instagram was giving me smoke. I don't know what Instagram, I don't know what Instagram had going on, man. But we're going we gonna to make this thing happen. So I'm going to wait for my people. Let me send out these invites real quick. You know what I'm saying? And we can make this thing happen 100%. Because what they not going to do is keep a real nigga down. You understand? Ah, I got my dog on here. Okay. And then, where you at, girl? Bam. We in there? Hey, 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 hey. hey, talk that shit. Hey, we in the building. Hey, talk about it. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on, folks? Miss Lady. What's going on, Miss Lady? How you doing? All right. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Not Miss Mo with the wig sitting on front of the table, though. Hey! This is my homegirl. <laughs> what, what's her name? This is this is Rashonda. All right. Well, hey, Shonda. How you doing? Hey, Shonda. How you doing? <laughs> Listen, y'all know when somebody diverts you so many times, you just got to get your different wigs and call them your different personalities Ooh. and talk to them because them friends will fuck all over you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with it. I would, see, I need to get me a partner then. I don't know how that's here, but I'm going to get me a partner though. I tell you what, you go get the right advice from because you ain't gonna leave yourself wrong unless you. That real. Ooh, talk about it. girl. Let me. You already. You already dropping jewels already. Hey, I'm just trying to tell you something. I ain't mad at it. Listen, so listen. Let's go ahead and get the thing started. So listen, anybody who's on our, um, we went ahead and shared it. I'm sharing it from my personal page, but uh, Jaw Jacket was, you know, Instagram trying to keep it real nigga down, but we still gonna be great. Uh, Come on. Man. So we sharing it from Jaw Jacket. Jaw Jacket is logged on here, so everybody who usually follows Jaw Jacket. It's a little roundabout way, but you know what I'm saying? We got that thing situated. So first of all, let's get this thing started. This is our Spotlight Thursdays that we like to do. We like to uh, recognize, you know what I'm saying, our people, you know what I'm saying, doing great things, doing big things, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we're going to start off with Miss Mo. What's up? What's going on? So we're going to, we're going to allow, I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself. So first of all, I'm P. Bella Fonte, a.k.a. Chico Fonte, one-third of the Jaw Jacket Show. I'm a big Pimp C fan, and, uh, you know, forgive me if you ain't know, but I like to start every show off by saying top notch hoes get the most, not the left. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, King Zo, I'm going to let you go, and then we're going to let Ms. Mo introduce herself. Yeah, you, you're not going to buy King Zo 3062. Uh, I'm a nice guy on Thursday, so I ain't going to say too much. That's real, that's real, that's real. And Ms. Mo, uh, we like to introduce y'all to our, our, our honored guest. Uh, Ms. Mo, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. What's up with some of my good people? It's your girl M O E coming to you straight coffee, no motherfucking tea. Y'all hey. already know it. Hey, hey, okay, Hi. okay. So let's get this thing started, Miss Mo. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Where you from, man, and, and, and what you got going on? Well, I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, I'm from the hard part, Fifth Ward. Um, right. I graduated in 2000. I didn't become a mom until um, 11 years ago. My husband is my baby daddy. That's um, what it is. Uh, and uh, anyway, but I adopted four kids and I wound up having triplets and I'm talking about life because I used Ooh. to live fast. Like I used to be on the go, I used to be on the move. I had two, three jobs. What they say, two, three jobs, two, three niggas. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, life life chose a different direction for me. After I adopted the four kids, I kind of calmed down. I had uh. something to focus focus on that was meaningful. And then I got engaged and then I got pregnant with triplets. And that's when life started, like really, really started. So, Mo, Mo, let me ask you a question, man. You talking about triplets? Um, so I got this, I got this whole philosophy. I, I, I'm a big believer in if we was to have twins or triplets, I can't bring all them kids home at the same time because I only bought one baby seat. So, <laughs> like, so. <laughs> now, but you playing? Listen, you playing? I worked at LBJ um, for 15. Years. I didn't. 
I worked there. I just resigned in January due to the COVID vaccine. I was one of the people that was not with getting vaccinated. I didn't see a reason for mm -hmm. it. So I resigned, but it was a chick there, and she had triplets, but she asked me, she said, so what you going to do? And I'm like, what you mean, what you going to do? She said, you going to have all three of them? I'm like, what the fuck you mean you going to have all three? She said, well, you know you can get, if you only want one, you can get have like an abortion with two of them. For and real? Keep one, yeah. But I was like, fuck around and kill the two good ones and, and bring home that little demons. <laughs> You ain't lying. You ain't lying. Hey, 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 and honestly, like once you get all the babies through pampers and teeth, then you good now. You right. I, I, I need to meet your husband, baby daddy. That nigga's a su that nigga's a superhero, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my husband, look, my husband literally was my first boyfriend at fourteen, right? Oh. He told me like walking down the street, I was like fourteen, fifteen. He was like, "You gonna be my wife," but he wanted to. He was he I was I was grew up kind of fast. He was a dude and I was a girl. So usually when girls grow up fast, they move with the dudes with the money so they can go and get from their mom's mm -hmm. house, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was the dude that had to, had a bad part of life, like his mama and, and shit. Like shit was going on with his family. So yeah. he hustled. So he wound up getting some bad time. But when he came home, like we got together, we've been together ever since it's 16 years. You were waiting on him? Who? You. We weren't together when he went to jail. I mean, see, y'all wasn't together. I mean, you had other niggas, but y'all was together. If you, if he, if he done caught out. No, no, honestly, like we. Okay, so I went with him when I was fourteen, fifteen, right? So he a hustler. So you already know what come with the game. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm fourteen, fifteen, fucking with him. He's seventeen at the time. The girls he started fucking with was like nineteen to twenty one. I mm -hmm. couldn't play with them. Like I couldn't get no apartment. I was fourteen, fifteen years old, so I let him have all game. Okay, well, shit, I ain't mad at. It. I guess. Uh, all right, so listen, so listen, so what, so, so you got, um, you got a, uh, what you say, uh, uh, straight coffee, no chasing? Straight coffee, no chasing. So <laughs> that's, that's my podcast, it's, uh, the coffee shop. So it's meant to wake people up mentally. So you know how a lot of these, uh, these podcasts is really to like talk people business. I'm not going to nobody know about trying to find out if they pay their life bill or not. That's not, not really. my job. My job is to get out here and let people know, say, man, I was in them streets. I was mm -hmm. really in them streets. And I'm not in them streets. I don't have no background. I have a college degree. I have a, pu a published book that will soon be a, a movie. You know, so it's like, don't get caught up out there in the world like that and feel like you don't have no chance because that distraction is real. Them niggas with that fast money, them mm -hmm. fat booty ass women, all that shit is a distraction. Ooh, I'm so great. My, you my right. is really to, when you talk about real life shoppers, we talk about everything. There's no holes, balls, but it's really to like wake people up. It's not to tell nobody that. Yeah, right. true. Yeah, respect. Uh, so tell us about what's going on with the book, though. What made you write? What made you decide to write a book? Okay, so I've been writing out my life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've been writing out my life. I graduated late. I graduated at 19. I kept dropping in and out of school. Like, I would stop going to school and get a job to help my mama with bills. Like, we literally grew up like that. So yeah. when I got out of school, my, my, my dream was to become a writer, um, actor, uh, fashion designer. But, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't go like that. I got distracted. I started making quick money, like, you know, right. writing I got stuff you. like that. Um, start making quick money, start messing with it. And I, I really got away from that. But when the big kids that I adopted start acting out, like my focus started becoming them, right? I was like, man, we gon' they don't need to, like they don't have to worry about student loans or nothing because by me adopting them through the government, the government was gonna pay for their college and stuff. So I'm right. like, man, I could have, I could have grown some lawyers, some doctors, you know, some council members. Mm -hmm. These kids got big. Their parents came home from jail. They started telling them oh, they don't have to listen to me. They don't have to follow my directions. And I'm talking about it hurt my heart. Like, I didn't have no kids when I adopted them. I was 25 years old, you know. And my dude was fresh out of the bed. So we literally locked ourselves down to be parents to kids that yeah. didn't even, like, appreciate it. When they, they parents came back home, it was just like, Fuck them rules and fuck them all and this, that, and another. You know, so it really broke me down. And I can remember coming home from college 
one night and I just was crying. I was like, what did I do wrong? And it was like a clear voice. I know it was God. It was just like, he ain't do nothing wrong. They probably couldn't have raised them better than you. They, yeah. they mama had six kids and five baby daddies. There's no way she could have been better than you. Whoosh. Yeah. yeah, you know what? You know they say, man, some things you just got to go through in order to be delivered, man. That Maybe that's just something that had to prepare you for the triplets you had ready to go. But what made you, so what made you adopt them kids, though? Like, them were just people in the neighborhood or them family members or what's up? So my nephew, I have a nephew. He had started dating a girl. The girl had two kids mm. when she got with him. And so I'm the kind of auntie that, I, I swear, like, my standards was like, hey, if you don't got no kids, don't go get these girls with all these kids. That's Even though it might be wrong. <laughs> That's how I was, but he he was young. He was like 17, and the girl was like 18, but she had two kids already. And so yeah. I was telling him, hey, that girl already got rid of my family. He and he mm -hmm. not high school yet. Leave that girl where she at. Well, they messed around. She he got her pregnant, so his mm -hmm. baby was the third kid. Mm -hmm. So did, wait, 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 real quick. Uh, did he bring did he did he bring McDonald's for all the kids? Listen, that Negro ain't gonna bring McDonald's for his kids. <laughs> I had his kid. Listen, I had the kids for 15 years. They did not send no McDonald's. Like, what's going on with this? And I'm like, I literally was out here by myself, and these kids were not getting no help from the parents. You know, like, yeah. yeah so now he wouldn't have bought McDonald's for the one child he had. No, he wasn't buying it for the three. Yeah. But yeah, so CPS wound up taking them, and they asked me to get them temporary. Then temporary turned to 15 years. Damn, that's a long temporary. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah. well, shit. is that is that what the book about? Is the book telling about your life and shit like that, or what's up? No, what's so up? my book is I Made the Leave, right? Yeah. Right. So it's about a chick. Her name is Jackie. She um uh, she was conceived. Um, uh, she like a something like a lust child. You know how when you sneak mm -hmm. links and whatever, you having fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, she got conceived in high school, and when her dad found out the mom was pregnant, he was like, hey. We're going to make this official. I don't want to sneak around no more. So they was in high school when this happened. They wound up getting married. And instead of his, like, he was the dope boy at first. You know, he was cool, the cool kid. Yeah. Well, once they got. Did I lose him? I think your mic went down. That'd be lean. She from Houston, so it's leaning. My bad. I you Once um, they got married and had the baby, his whole lifestyle changed. He just was like a working man coming home. So I put that in the book because I hear a lot of women, when they get with their guy, he be one way. And once they get together, he turned into a whole different dude. He get boring. He don't want to do nothing. And with women, we have a lot of, like, even though your woman might be sexy and want to be romantic with you, she also wants you to kind of slut out in the bedroom. Not yeah. so bad, but you know. All that, you go out and you cheat on your woman and you get in the other woman a powerful deed, but you come back yeah. and you, you badly touching me and shit. That, that, yeah. that's kind of, and that's kind of what went on with her. She got bored with the relationship. She kept telling him, hey, we need to switch up. He didn't switch up. So the last time she went to him with some divorce papers. So when she took him the divorce papers, he finally reacted in a way to where she knew he was going to change. And okay. this is bringing awareness to domestic violence, is bringing awareness to police brutality, is bringing awareness to dysfunctional relationships and toxic relationships, because we got so many twists and tangles up in this, this, this book, and it's really bringing the red, like, I have a quote in here, it's about red flags, a lot of people sit up here, we ignore the red flags, when a dude tell you, like, you're not leaving me, like, I, I kill you, you got to kind of take that and like, man, why would you say you would kill me like you love me? You shouldn't want to even think about harming me in this battle. But a lot of that go on in this book, and it's really to bring awareness to a lot of situations. Yeah, yeah, I, I can respect that. Come with yeah, so right now. Uh, the red flags, you got to pay attention to the red flags. That's a big, big red flag right there. Right, you got to pay attention to the red flags. Um, I got the... I'm, I'm dropping jewels in the book, too. It's little quotes like I grew up on and stuff or quotes that I came. But, okay, so like this one quote right here. Mm -hmm. Go it read says, it. says, ask yourself, why is it easy to make an excuse for your action? But if the next person does the exact same thing, you will find fault in their actions. Stop yeah. ne uh, enabling negative behavior. Allow yourself uh, room for growth by holding yourself accountable for your actions. 
A lot of people know they doing wrong. A lot of people yeah. look at somebody else and be like, man, they wrong this motherfucker and turn around it's and do the same. The same motherfucker thing. They have yeah. a reason for why they did what they did. Like, yeah, because why right. is your reason better than my reason? You right. You are a hundred percent motherfucker right. You ain't never lied. But listen, I'm gonna tell you something though. If I tell you, if if you ever hear something come out my mouth talking about something, you ain't leaving me. I promise you, I'm gonna be in the bushes with a monkey suit on, ready to jump out on any nigga that think they finna come to my motherfucking house. You understand know me? But that's just me. I ain't, I ain't trying to show out, but I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show a little ass. I'm gonna show a little. Right. Yeah, but either way, as fuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> either way, but nah, that shit. I mean, that shit sounds interesting. Like, do you got a, do you have like a um a specific a specific uh, target audience when it comes to that? Are we talking like young young, young women, young men? You know okay, like? so the chick, the chick in the book, she, okay, so her parents, so it goes back and forth because it kind of gives detail and insight on her parents and their relationship, right? So the dad mm-hmm. suffered with mental disorder. It also covers that. He suffered with bipolar and schizophrenia disorder, right? So bam, yeah. an incident go on in the book to where the night that they say, okay, he say, okay, I'm going to work on whatever I have to do to keep my, my wife. He yeah. takes her out on the town. They have a wonderful time. They, they pull up on the side of the road, have some good sex. Yeah. 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 Well, upon, and I'm going to give y'all this part of it. Upon them, upon them getting ready to leave after having sex on the side of 16 freeway, uh, the lava's pull up behind. And it, like I said, it's bringing awareness po- to police brutality. And the law come over and asked the guy, he was like, hey, give me your license and registration. And the dude was like, well, what we did? Because he knew, hell, we were pulled over. Like, you didn't have no reason to pull up behind us unless you asking us, do we need some help? Yeah. Well, by the guy talking back to the law, the law get mad, he called him a nigga. And when the dude responded to him, when the dude responded to what was going on, he shot him. God so, damn. yeah. So imagine this. You already suffering with mental illness, right? Mm. And the law shoot you. So now he survived that, wind up getting a settlement, right? But he fucked up in the head. So now he's yeah. already on the edge of yeah. losing his wife, but now he's mentally abusing her, uh, uh, verbally abusing her. Now she at the point where, like, say, man, I got to get up out of here. I'm not going to take this shit no more. But they got millions of dollars in the bank. So he got money from getting shot, but mentally it messed him up even yeah, more. It's bringing a lot of awareness to in something really. It, it, it turns up, in, up, up a notch on that I situation. Got you. It's bringing awareness to a whole bunch of stuff, but it's called I Made Him Leave because it's like every man that she damn near encountered left her. So she kind of, you know, feel I made him leave, but yeah. it all go, it's all going to come around to let you know why it's really tight with I Made Him Leave. Okay, yeah, she internalized making the thing go. Okay, well, shit, that shit sounds interesting as hell. That sounds, hey, you, that you shit sounds dope. You said you're gonna make it a movie too? Yeah. All right, well, did yeah. that. Yeah. All right. But it's well, really, it's really good. Uh, part two drops in November. Is I made him leave his dead life after death. So somebody died. Yeah, I'm gonna have to read. Now nah, I don't got interest. I feel like this. Yeah. This shit sound like an episode of Power. Listen, listen, if I tell you it's a bad mug, I, I'm not just saying everybody that done purchased the book, I done had people say they done read this book two, three times. One girl say she broke up with her dude. She was like, I had to let him go because it's so many relationships. It's like, I'm going to say four relationships in this book, right? But you know how people can be fucking around and you not even know people fucking around, but you and this dude is real cool? It's a lot of that going on and people don't find out until the last minute and it's too late. Mm. Oh, so people asking where they can find the book, so they they, they want to see it. So just go ahead and tap that in. Okay, it's uh you can anywhere books are sold, Barnes and Noble. This at forty thousand locations, or you can get it off my website www.thecoffeeshop.net. That's T H A not T H E www. What's the name of it again? Huh? I made him leave. What's the name of it? I made him leave. I made him leave. Okay. All right, well, hold on. Let me pin the title real because apparently these niggas want me to pin something. So after that, so so what else you got going on, Lamama? That book sounds interesting as hell. I think I ain't reading about fifteen years, but I'm about I, I'm about to start something. Listen, if I tell you I had some chicks that they was like, man, I really don't read. They say, but I put picked your book up. Listen, I have a, a homegirl. She say her dude don't talk in the bedroom, but my book is so detailed and so explicit Ooh. that she said she did exactly what I said. In my book, to her man, and her man finally was saying something in the bedroom. That nigga was talking all morning. Which one was he? Was he 
Making no noise talking. No matter. All of it. She said he, she said he was, you know, she said he was moaning the entire time. She said he was like, God damn, this is sloppy. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. I've been, yeah. I've been yeah. that just thinking. You hear me? Yeah, so it goes down. I mean, this book it got everything in it. You gonna laugh because it got um, it got the uh, jokes in there to one one of the chicks she threw out the book, but uh, the dude caps on her and tell her, "Hey, you need to you need to go take this change that I'm giving you and buy you some edges." You know, so I got some little punchlines. All right, well, did that. You were you were, you were, you funny as hell too. Now listen, I gotta say something because you know what I'm saying. You know, I'm. I'm I like to bring things up, but listen, I seen you standing real strong in one of your little profile pictures. You know, I like to do a little research and shit. Like, is that what, 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 like, what, you was at LBJ working like that? Like, did you, what, what other things, if when someone looks at you, is there anything that they would like, are there any misconceptions that they may have for you? Or is there things that they would probably say, you know what, I would never see her doing that or doing this or anything oh, like man, that? Let me like, tell you something. In LBJ, okay, let me tell you something. So at LBJ, because I was there for 15 years, so I was kind of young when I went in. But um, even with the book, one, the, uh, like a lot of my coworkers bought the book, but a Hispanic, a Hispanic chick bought the book, and she looked at me when I came in, and she was just like, because I go to work looking like this. Mm -hmm. I, when I get jazzy, I get jazzy, but I go to work looking regular, right? I came to work, she was just standing at me. She said, I ain't going to lie. She said, I'm, she said, I don't want to offend you. I said, you ain't going to offend me, because I done heard everything. I'm, from, I'm a project kid. You can't, yeah. you can't miss me with nothing like, she said, I ain't going to lie. She said, I just didn't think I was going to get that from that book from you. She said, man, mm. that could be a movie. She said, I'm not lying. She said, I didn't, I didn't see, she said, I don't know what I seen in you. She said, but I didn't see that. Mm. All right. Kizo, you got any questions, you got any questions for, uh, uh, uh DJ? I was going to wait till later, but I see on her page, she be cooking, boy. Woo! Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw that shit. Yeah. I see one of them pictures. You had the you had the sauce. You had the right rice, and you had the garlic. Garlic is that garlic bread on top of the rice? Oh, I almost fed it. <laughs> so my goal was okay. So I had been okay. So I'm off work, right? So I had been yeah. volunteering these last like two to three months at this little this little lounge, like in the hood, with hopes of he, him giving me more Mondays in return for my free label. Mm -hmm. So I did a book sign in there, but kind of got fucked and realized, like, no, if you fuck me for this, and I've been giving you, like, two months of free labor, you'll fuck me right. when it comes to the actual Mo Mondays. So yeah. uh, I just, I, I opted out of it. So I'm going to get it. Like, I want to cook. I want to do all that. But I don't want to actually be in the kitchen, but I can't cook. I want to start it off and, and hopes to have an actual coffee shop that sells brunch-related foods. That sounds like a dope ass idea too. Shit, I I, I think I'd be the first one at your coffee shop when that shit jump. Hey, that's um, what I'm talking about. I'm happy to invite both of you. Listen, we down for the calls. What's that? We've been trying to get to Texas anyway. Oh, Listen, okay. after, huh? Yeah, I need to come down here. This is what a good food is. Girl, that's what they say. I don't know. I got to see what's happening. I, mean, I, I don't know. Don't know so, you know, so, so, you, 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 you were born there. Like all the nights, you ain't never going home. Ooh, shit, throw it up. What'd you say? Throw it up in the air, turn it the same time. <laughs> Yeah, you know it's hot down here too. It's sunshine, baby. It's sunshine state. Oh, she's talking good shit. Okay, let's see. Talk this shit. Listen, you ever left? Have you ever been outside? Of, um, like, have you ever lived anywhere outside of um, Texas? Or is that just home team? That's it. No well. I never lived outside of Texas. I traveled, but no, never stayed. Yeah. Would you? Would you ever leave? I, if I would leave, I would want to stay like in the Bahamas or Atlanta, something like that. Oh, you gotta okay. be black. Listen, I'm, listen, do you hear me? Yeah. I'm telling you, when I visited both of those places, I, I felt like I was at home. I'm like, God, please. Especially the Bahamas, them people was just so sweet and kind down there. Atlanta that nice, too. Houston used to be been. nice like that, but I guess all these people that came down here, everybody mean stuck up, nose in the air. I didn't get that when I went to Atlanta, and that's where the money at. That might have been your. That might have been your answer. You might got a little Bahamian in you. Ain't no telling. That might have been your answer. For talking well, I might take you to Haiti then. You might love it too. I had, I oh yeah, we. To see. But you know what? In my book, in my book, uh, like the two, like it's a drug lord and then it's an ex pro 
um, football player, they hate you. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah? Y'all got so I'm going to need you for my movie, okay? Girl, look. Hold on, hold on. Hey, sign me up. I'm going to need you let, for my movie. Let me do my promo right now. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. You got it. <laughs> yeah, hey, stop that shit, nigga. Stop that shit. You got it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I swear I have like, and then one of the chicks she's mixed with African and uh, Puerto Rican. But yeah, I need me some Haitian men. That'll be good. We got plenty on down here, man. So is there anything else you wanted to bring up, man? So the people know about you. Something that you wanted to bring to the forefront. So y'all can go check out my podcast. Y'all can like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Coffee Shop. My name is Robin Mo Underwood. If you look for my book, if you Google I Made Him Leave, it's going to pop up. It's, in, it's available anywhere. I Made Him Leave. Um, All right. Hey, check out my page. I'm looking kind of rough right now, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm what I am. Yeah. I, 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 I did look at your page. I just want to let you know. Damn. <laughs> But we, hey, we have to go to Texas, boy. Goddamn. The list, the list I tell you, no, seriously, we, we need to stay contacting each other because when it comes up, we're going to be working on that soon. When it comes up, in the we, in the, we in the motherfucker building, I promise you, man. We're going we, we to be there to support regardless. All right, and I'm going to have y'all something on the menu. Thank y'all so much for having me on that show. Well, we we'll appreciate you, Robin. All right, so listen, again, y'all please go follow the book. Name of the book is I Made Them Leave. You can order, you can go to any of the bookstores, you know what I'm saying, to go pick them up. Hey, can we get it from, like, Amazon Prime or anything like that? Can we yeah, get it Amazon, Boys, and that? No, yeah. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, y'all yeah. go in there, quit bullshitting all your life, man. Go ahead and order that, go ahead and order the book, man, and um, get into some real shit, man. Y'all no. like power, y'all like all these other shows. Go and watch that shit. That's, I mean, go and read the book, man. The book live. Yeah, more, 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 much respect for you for being an author and bringing that kind of uh lifestyle or you know different stuff to to, to the people man and i appreciate that and number of love from here okay mo, when, right, when, your, so when, your, when is your podcast mo it's called it's, it's the coffee shop it's on youtube you can find it on youtube you can find it on anchor um, what do you do it, though? like is, is it is it like a weekly thing or is it just like a uh when weekly you to? okay what, what days do you usually post them uh uh tuesdays T tuesdays tuesdays Okay, cool. You like right. to say that? I caught that. <laughs> is that that? Is that yeah, that you? Man, my kids be talking about the way I be talking. <laughs> All right, yeah, we definitely go check it out, man. Hey, listen, if you ever need any um grown ass men to talk a little shit on the podcast, man, let us know, man. We trying to come through both ways, man. Just bet, definitely. I need y'all. All right, we appreciate you, Mo, man. Have a good day, yeah. You too. Thank you. Take it easy, baby. So, King Go. Yeah. What's up, my boy? Hey, so shit. You, hey, you see how uh Facebook trying to keep a real nigga down, man? That's our Facebook, Instagram. Hey, man, fuck Instagram. They all the same motherfucking thing, nigga. Fuck them. Fuck them all. Why would they, somebody did that shit or some shit we said that they... I don't know. We'll talk about that shit later. Listen, I appreciate... Hey, listen. So, we, me, King Go... Y'all Jack so Duke couldn't make it, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? We appreciate it. Hey, 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 somebody's going to say something, though. I don't know. I don't know. She's talking about, we're talking about accent. But it's actually say Tuesday, though. It's actually say Tuesday, Shay. Uh, somebody accent. I think Florida niggas ain't got no accent. We speak English. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, yeah, y'all niggas go get the book, man. The shit sound, I ain't going to lie. The shit sound real good. Yeah, it sounds very interesting, bro. I'm trying yeah, to yeah, definitely got to read it. Yeah, y'all fuck with it, man. But we appreciate everybody joining. Sorry for the inconvenience that we had earlier. Like I said, Instagram tried to stop a nigga from being great, but you know what I'm saying? Hey, try to see if you can fix that before uh, Saturday, though. Oh, shit, we gonna see. It's up to Instagram, bro. They ain't got shit to do with us. Though. Worst case scenario, we got a roundabout to work, to work through it. So we'll figure it out. But either way, we love y'all, man. We appreciate y'all. God bless y'all. Good night.